DHCP is so important to us that when it comes to version 6, we actually have two different kinds of DHCP we can use. Uh, two different operations, I should say. We have stateful and we have stateless DHCP. And we know with certification exams, when the names of two different services are that close, we better be really crystal clear on the differences between the two. Uh, let me see if a, this little story I wrote here sounds familiar to you. A host sends a DHCP message hoping to hear back from a DHCP server. The server gives the host a little initial information and after another exchange of packets, the host is good to go with the IP address it accepted from the server. That address is good for the duration of the lease as defined by the server itself. There are four overall messages in the entire DHCP process, two sent by the client, two sent by the server. The location of the DNS servers is also given to the client. Hmm. The server keeps a database of information on clients that accept the IP addresses that it offers. And a little problem comes in when there's a router between our host and our DHCP server. In that case, we need the router to act as a relay agent. All that should sound really familiar. And not only does it describe DHCP version 4, it also describes stateful DHCP version 6. Okay, so there have to be some differences then, right? Absolutely, the messages are a little bit different. Version 6 messages are solicit, advertise, request, and reply. They take the place of DHCP version 4's discovery, offer, request, and acknowledgement messages. So instead of saying, okay, it's Dora, when it comes to version 6, you could say it's SAR, with two R's, that is. Version 6 lets the client know where the DNS servers are, just like uh, version 4's DHCP did and does. But what DHCP version 6 does not include is default router information. The host gets that via NDP. Remember I said a long time ago in this section that the router, excuse me, the host sends out a router solicitation message and it's looking for primarily, primarily the link local address of any routers on the segment on that link, but it actually gets a little more information back. That's some of the little more information is the default router info. So again, with version six, with version six, we still get DNS server information from DHCP, but default router information comes from the NDP, the neighbor discovery protocol. Now the relay agent operation, it's a lot like that of version four. There are obviously some different messages and addresses involved, but this illustration and quick lab we're going to do of a typical relay agent operation shows you how similar the two are. This solicit message is link local in scope. So if there is a router between the host and the DHCP server, we know that by default the server has no chance to get it because the router is not going to forward a link local message. So we have to configure the router as a relay agent for DHCP. We do that with the IPv6 DHCP relay command on the interface that will be receiving the packets that need to be relayed. Now we have some options here with DHCP client, relay, and server, but in this course we're only going to concentrate on the relay agent config. And the relay agent config is pretty straightforward, I hope. Let's find out what's going on here. IPv6 DHCP, and we're going to use the relay option. Watch this one because you do actually have to type the word destination. You could shorten it up, I guess, and just try DES or something. But you have to put that in, and then, and only then, are you going to put in the IP version 6 address. I think I'm being so stringent about that minor point because I've done it so many times. You type IPv6 DHCP relay, and then you just type in the address of the DHCP server that they need to be relayed to, and you forget I have to type the word destination. So let's go ahead and just paste that address in. And so far, so good. Let me just use my up arrow for that. Let's look back at the interface and notice this extra group membership that we've joined. Man, this is the fourth group that we've joined without explicitly trying to join it. And you can see this one, it's FF02, two colons, one, and then a colon, and then a two. So watch that because we know what these first two addresses are, but this third one is very different. It is the all DHCP servers and relay agents address. So you definitely want to watch that one since they're all uh, version 6 related, of course, but the numbers are pretty close together. 
really that's uh, that's about all there is to it as far as that goes. As a result of that command, what happens then, of course, is the router will relay the DHCP solicit to the destination we specify in that command. And then when the router sees return messages from the DHCP server, the router will then relay those messages to host A. And right here on the board, just as I just did, always verify it. Verify that the router is now a member of the all DHCP servers and agents multicast group with show IPv6 interface. And you can see again under joined group addresses that we have a new address that we've joined. So that's four groups that we've joined without really trying but now we know what all four of those are. So Stateful Auto Config, you know, it's a lot like classic DHCP, if you will, uh, DHCP version four. What we're gonna look at in the next video is stateless auto configuration, and uh, we're gonna cut ourselves some slack while we're at it. You'll see what I'm talking about in the next video. I'll see you there.